I want to give you a little history of me just to begin. So 30 years ago, I started a company which now prov helps provide digital identity to 10% of the human population. 20 years ago, I helped start a company which provides information and medical services and identity to 10% of all the infants in the world. It took them a long time to get there. Uh, 15 years ago, I started the conversation in Davos with the uh, um, uh, Justice Commissioner of the EU, the head of the Federal Trade Commission. That conversation advocated that people should have ownership rights in their data, and eventually Vivian Redding, who was the Justice Commissioner, went on to create GDPR. Uh, five years ago, I helped create a group called the Data Revolutionaries. That's the name of the UN Secretary General, not my name. But we put uh, data and identity centrally into the sustainable development goals where I'm on the board of directors. Um, but what I want to talk to you about today is the big picture. It's not about data ownership, it's not about privacy. It's bigger than that. Historically, we have land, labor, and capital as the elements of our social contract with the government. The governed look at these things, we have rights over them, the government helps us we give up some of those rights so that the government can help us behave. Now data has joined that threesome, so it's data, land, capital, and labor. But we don't have the rules for that. So ownership is certainly part of it, sort of GDPR. But there have to be other things. So for instance, with land, we have land titles. There's a certification method for doing that. But with data, we just sort of give it away and it goes everywhere, that's crazy. So one of the first principles is to share answers and not data. So if I want to know if you're older than 21, I ask the birth registry, present credentials that show that I have the right to ask that, and that answer comes back. I don't have you give me data. Leave data for the people that collected it for the particular purpose. That way you can know where it is, which is the second principle. Log everything. You have to know what's happening to data. You know what's happening to land. You know what's happening to money. That's why we have banks and audits and all that stuff, right? Well, if data is an equal part of that social contract, it has to have the same sort of mechanisms. Your identity, and there's a long story I can tell you about this, but your identity is the sum of all your relationships. You know who said that? Karl Marx. Do you know who else said that? Adam Smith. Very surprising. Your identity is partially created socially, partially through your choices. You have all rights over all of those things. And that's really the social contract that we need to have. The fact that you can log everything means that you can now audit it. You can tell when you're getting screwed over. For instance, we just did an audit of the government of Colombia. We discovered that there are a million people who should be getting social services who aren't. But there are also a million people who are getting social services that shouldn't get it. So we're just like, swap the two. Boy, is that a political problem. <laughs> so you might say, well, this is really great, you know, social contract, uh, maybe, maybe you even like the idea. Is it going to happen? Well, we're beginning to get some traction. So this is me wearing a tie. You will almost never see this. The president of the European Union asked me to lecture the ministers of the single digital market. So we had all the EU countries there. And this is what I told them, basically. And um, you might think that they would throw tomatoes or something. But actually, just last year, I keynoted Eurostat, which is the organization of all the EU countries' data controllers, right? All their statistics. And they have adopted this. They're going to have that sort of audit and control mechanisms. Now, it's just beginning, but it's getting there. The thing that I wanted to say tomorrow, but I'm going to bring it up, given the speakers that we have, is that controlling your identity is not sufficient. If I control my identity, it's wonderful, I can use it at party conversations, but I can't do anything with it 
because I don't have any political power. The way you get political power, historically, is through collective action. So we had the same problem that we have today with data a hundred years ago with labor. There were a few big corporations that were taking advantage of all the citizens and their labor. It was horrible. And what did they do? They formed unions, collective action to control their labor which they owned. We can do the same thing today. We can have cooperatives, collectives, that control our data. How does that work? Well, GDPR, and this actually works in American law too, gives you the right to get a copy of your data. And for instance, in most countries, and I think Germany is one of them, America is certainly one of them, there are these things called credit unions, which were originally established for money, but they have the right under federal charter to manage your identity and all of its documents. Well, today, that's your digital identity. So all the members of a credit union, which are typically a community organization, they're not a national organization, can download their data. It gives you that right. And the credit union holds it for you. It doesn't own it. It acts for you. Let's imagine that you did that here in Berlin, that you had, say, 100,000 people download data and held by their cooperative you could ask some very interesting questions of your data as a collective. You could say, for instance, are the drugs that the hospital's giving us actually working? You don't know the answer to that. Nobody wants to know, because it's not in their interest, it's in your interest, but you don't know. Do the drugs interact with each other? Are there side effects? Nobody knows, drug companies don't want to look, government really isn't that much interested in it but I'm interested. Once you have control of your data as an aggregate, you can ask questions that are politically powerful. So that's perhaps the next step in making data part of the social contract. Okay? It's a community thing also, I'll just emphasize, because the conditions in each place are a little different. The desires of everybody is a little bit different around the world. And because it's that rich sense of belonging that Sandra, I think, was talking about that is one of the things that we need to address. We, as a community, need to decide what to do with this new resource that we have, the resource called data. Thank you.